<laughs> well, was when did we meet? Um, no, um, less than years ago, yeah, when I think I first just arrived to Barcelona. And um, at the time, I think there was kind of like not that many people who were that interested in uh, AV new technologies, but also in the mobile technologies. Mm. I just came from working uh, in Motorola, and I was kind of like uh, looking for a community, kind of like all good people are interested in uh, mobile technologies, and you at the time were quite interested in that. So. And it was, it's incredible uh, how, how everything changed, no? Since uh, since then. Yeah. Oh, and at the time, it felt like a little bit of science fiction, I think, for at least not so much for the people who were working on the technology, but from the outside. Everybody was kind of like, this is the weird people who are talking about the future. The time have demonstrated that uh, you create uh, services and applications mm -hmm. that actually do help people in their lives. People will use them, and they're actually they're happy and grateful of, of using it. But mm -hmm. it has to be something that, that helps them in the to their lives. So. Actually, it's the first time that is we are seeing that is fading away, no? Because it's disappearing, no? Terminals are disappearing now with the glasses and all this kind of... Uh, new tools that we are using and we start using exactly. in five years uh, everything will be changed uh. because when we start prioritizing on the important thing being what users want to do and what they do it's less important that you have kind of like you had in a terminal mm. it's more important what i can do with it and therefore the fact that it's uh, embedded in many things also technology has uh, has uh, change a lot because now those days we have the internet of things when uh, everything can be connected that has been a change in the last years the best interface is the no interface no we mm -hmm. are getting rid of these uh, surfaces and these places where we have to uh, interact with and little mm -hmm. by little we are getting there with the um, all these devices and how do you face these uh, mm -hmm. these new ways of uh, interact with uh, mm -hmm reality actually well i think uh, you change the starting point so the starting point is not technology the starting point is the people. So what you do is uh, what we do and what other people do and, uh, in order to create a seamless user experience, which is kind of like what you're talking about, is uh, like just see how they work S or how they communicate or mm -hmm. uh, when they are with their friends, uh, which information they change and how they do it and what they're in their homes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do a lot of work here also with senior people. How do they live their lives so when you start looking into that with those eyes mm. then you see what is that they use in their homes in the day to day um, in the streets so i will say basically the most important thing is change your eyes the what do you look at in terms of developing new technology so you look at the people um, then integrate it into what is more familiar to them mm. so facing this user-centered design how do you choose the fields that you want to you want to investigate? And for us, this user experience has to have three very important factors, and um, it's the users, of course, it's the business because it has to make sense, business sense, and also the technology. So keeping that in mind, um, the projects can either start with one of those areas, or uh, they can start with the kind of like the meeting point of the three of them. It just depends on the project. So. Sometimes um, there will be a particular population that we identify that we kind of like want to help with. Sometimes it's more technology driven. We know we can do better. Uh, mm -hmm. We're all constantly innovating in technology. And sometimes it's market or kind of like business driven. So sort of like we know that um, there is a need in the market and so on. But uh, typically in all our projects, regardless of where they start, they have to meet all these three things. But how, how do we create a, through design a real service that is useful. The design doesn't start with you sitting on your desk. Um, the design to make something mm. useful start with uh, you going outside uh, where the users are and where the people are and understanding their needs. In terms of design, because the basic rule is less is more, and how, how do you mm -hmm. create this kind of design of uh, less is more to, to improve uh, the services through uh, mm -hmm. these small screens? Well, first of all, I don't think we, we were thinking those days in terms of small screens or bigger screens anymore. We're talking about multi-screen. So uh, you got to get also the big, per the big picture when you're designing something. So you're going to think about um, all the different screens that may be used mm. uh, and the from the very beginning. Uh, and then think about the context of each of those uh, screens and think about uh, what is that the users are going to need in each of those uh, moments. And this is how you say, okay, if I am at home with my tablet, kind of like having a quiet moment, or while I am, for example, maybe watching TV, then um, then I'm thinking, okay, well, how, what is the key information they want? 
or the key action they want to they want to do and then you focus on that one it's not about providing all the possibilities so in terms of the um, user experience which is the, your point of view uh, about the user experience and uh, which is the methodology that uh, mm -hmm. you're using with your team uh, mm -hmm. to it's <laughs> yeah it's, it's hard to, it's to describe in one mm. word or in a few <laughs> words with the whole user experience uh, in a sense uh, you can think about user experience more like how I think about more like an umbrella of different areas so with they all have a common goal which is as we said designing things that uh, make an impact on users and uh, and, uh, and also kind of like they, they, they their delight to use mm. we use the uh, methodologies from psychology and from uh, anthropology uh, like ethnography or, um, or when we do also some tests more like experimental tests from the psychology point of view so we use methodologies from those areas uh, but also of course uh, we will look into design and, and a lot of the methodologies and the like the co-design that uh, that they use and uh, to, to bring the users into the or the participatory design as it was called earlier and then we, we looked into the disciplines like the visual design and, mm -hmm. uh, and of course a lot of the for design aspiration the most important thing in an application is if it's useful and if it's uh, a positive feedback just uh, you, you keep using that but then if there are two that are very similar you will choose the most beautiful one that's 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 for sure and uh, sometimes uh, aesthetics is very very important in terms of uh, the mm. user experience the, the interaction design is very mm. critical because the transition the transitions between screens and the way you kind of like um, navigate from one place to another for it's also for me part of the aesthetics too in that mm -hmm. it, it affects the way you you see the look and feel of something what's important is not to be sequential in that kind of like okay i create an interaction and then i give it to the visual designers and then the visual designers make it pretty no that's not i, I will say a good formula i think they all work together and uh, and they bring the best of uh, the mm -hmm. world one thing that is for us kind of wrap up a lot of what we do we're trying to follow a lean startup approach mm -hmm. this often um fail as early as possible Mm. Because the, the, the you're going to make some mistakes. So the important thing is that you make them the early as possible and then you learn from them. Yeah. That's the philosophy behind to doing what they call the minimal Bible product. It's like you do the minimal that shows and demonstrate uh, what do you think is core. Mm. Of course, there may be many other things around, but what it is the real core. And also, it helps to streamline a lot of things. So you kind of like, okay, what is my core? Give it to the users. And then they will be able to tell you uh, not only how to improve it, but what is the best direction mm. to go. It looks like that Telefonica is one of uh, the few places here, at least here in Barcelona, that uh, has applied uh, an agile mm -hmm. way of uh, working. No? Mm -hmm. How did you succeed to do that? Because it looks like uh, it's very easy to talk about that, but it's not uh, very easy to implement. Uh. What is very core to the, to the agile is that the developing team knows better than the, um, well not just the development team, but kind of like the, the team that is in, in there uh, doing the, this project is the, is the one who knows better. Mm. So um, empower them, we talk about empowerment of the user, but also empower them. And then things flow because kind of like then you kind of like, okay, you get this um, is, uh, is sprint planning for this, and then you get the, the team deciding what do they think that uh, they have to do first and how they're going to divide the work and um, how much work is each of the user cases mm -hmm. and which one are prioritary. And also in the multidisciplinary spirit that we talk about, in the sprints we also got the designers there and um, both interaction designers, the visual designers, and they all kind of decided together how they are going to collaborate for the sprint. They meet together again to decide how can they improve, how can they do better for the next sprint. Mm. So that's... Um, because in, the, in companies, Actually, right now there is a big problem with uh, designers and programmers, no? Because it looks like they does, doesn't in, uh, understand each other, no? Because there are two different philosophies. So, how did you successfully integrate the designers and? Uh, I think this is more of a rumor than a reality when you put them to work together. I think it's more of a misunderstanding from outside. 
I understand what you say because Anna, um, and just to talk to uh, people from that haven't been involved in this day to day, mm. they, they got a concept. But when you are inside there and you see them working kind of like on the same desk and then kind of like pointing to something and then asking things to each other, people understand each other and kind of like uh, they collaborate uh, much easier. Sometimes we think that creating, generating code is something not, um, you just sit hours there, but it's also it could be quite creative too. Mm. Uh, it's much more easier to much more easy to teach design to the programmers than teach programming to designers no so we are, we are really orienting as like a, now the artists are um, those that really are good programming no uh, and the same thing else is, is happening with the designers people from programming are starting to become good designers little by little how do you face it? Is that something that is happening here in, uh, in your Yeah, your we definitely team? do have some uh, hybrid uh, profiles. And uh, I think in our society, uh, we're not um, rigid anymore in that you studied uh, and you studied that and then you're for all your life. So you study engineering and therefore all your life you're an engineer. I myself study psychologies and I wouldn't know how to define what I do, a part of a design strategy or something mm. like that. So <laughs> it's a, it's, you, you not kind of, you don't get tax like, like before, uh, li like someone was a blacksmith and it was a blacksmith for life kind of thing. Uh, people are much more um, aware, they can learn new things and they can, uh, and they can let their uh, imagination and, uh, and all the, you know, what they really want to do to flow. So if you channel that, um, then people will kind of like um, ask you, I mean, obviously there has to be an environment for that, as I said. We do have some communities um, inside the house, kind of like for um, different type of uh, disciplines, but uh, you could have, but also we have multidisciplinary communities because we are interested in a particular uh, uh, area mm -hmm. of or, or type of services. So let's say we're a community for e-health, to, to, to give you an example, and that is not for developers or for designers, the people who are interested in that. Anyone inside the company can kind of mentor someone in any area, and it doesn't have to be, um, so it could be, the, uh, it doesn't have to be business or anything, like it can be anything. So it could be that someone who is a, um, a visual designer and want to be more an interaction designer and want to, want to learn how to, how to program these interactions. They make wow. it somewhere. That sounds like paradise to me. Like, <laughs> what no. is uh, just just the last the last uh, point? What is mm, beauty for you? Is this a more um, programming or design? Uh, well, uh, from my point of view, beauty is is defined for me from the impact that it has in their lives. I mean, for me, there is nothing more beautiful than seeing that uh, there is some users, mm -hmm. some people, like I was mentioning earlier with mm -hmm. the spreading women, that had a problem, and now it has been solved and you have held it into that process. That, that's how I define that something is, uh, that a service for me is beautiful uh, when the user appropriates it and change their lives and you can like, live a better world. That's definitely a beautiful answer. <laughs> Thank you very much, Raquel. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>